Good day everyone. Today on the bench I'm going to tie you up a little caddis pupa. It's a fly that I've seen some stomach samples and I uh, duplicated what I thought would be the best for materials and it's been producing quite well for me over the last few years here so I'll just show you the materials we need to tie the fly and then we'll get right to it. Uh, the hook I'm going to use a size 14 curved caddis hook <clears throat> from Mustad. We want a nice caddis curved bend. Um, for the ribbing I'm going to use some pearl tinsel. This is small. The body I am going to use some Arizona synthetic peacock. I'm going to tie it in the hair's ear for you right now. You can get that in here. Some nice caddis green if you want to fish Maybe a, a nice caddis down at the bottom, I'd go with a brighter green. Pheasant tail, if you use that color, has been really good. Dark hairs here, matches some naturals in some lakes. And even this chocolate I found in uh, some of my local waters here, there's been some lakes that's been really, really good. So we'll get started here. I'll just tie the, uh, the hairs here. Coloration and the color to match. The thorax, I am going to use some peacock ice dub. And the wing case and the legs, we're going to use some pheasant uh, tail, so just a few fibers. So let's get a hook in the vise and tie up Brent's caddis pupa. And uh, it's, it's a variation of other caddis patterns. I mean, it's pretty hard to come up with something that's totally unique. I just change, sometimes you change your materials and so forth. And, and uh, I found this kind of an easier tie and, and uh, it works quite well and the fish like to eat it so I'm happy with that. Cover the thread, uh, the hook with thread well, as we always do and I'm using just a rusty brown 8 aught thread. You can use um, a color to match the, the head of your caddis if you wish. Now we'll bring in some of our our synthetic pe um, peacock. This is really nice dubbing. John Romer from Arizona dubbings do all this. Get a nice thin body on here so we can taper it. I want it thinner at the back. And then we can just start building it as we go forward. It's really buggy here. It's going to pull out. I'm going to trim, get a little of that off. And then I'll get a little bit of a taper to the front. Okay, uh, that's a good when it gets in the water. That uh, little bit of buggy yeah, it gives you a little translucency as well. Then I'm just going to wind my rib forward. And this is beautiful. This looks so good in the water. This pearl tinsel, I use that on quite a few flies now, and I really like it. You can kind of see the body there. Nice segmentation, little buggy look to it then come in here with a few fibers from the pheasant tail we're going to come in with probably pull that to the side take six or so fibers pheasant tail fibers I'm going to just kind of go to the bend over here tie that in the top go back a little bit back over for the thorax cut my butts off that I'm going to bring in my peacock ice stub wet my fingers, I'm just going to roll this on, I want it pretty tight on the shank, we don't have much of a, it's a small fly so we don't want it too too out of proportion and I'm going to do my little thorax with that it's a nice easy fly to do I'm going to sure just tip it up here so I don't lose my thread, don't fall off. I'll pull my wing case over the top. And then we're just going to divide these fibers in half. Take another one over there. Pull the other half of them over to this side. Tie them down a little bit. And then I'll whip finish my head. I 
There you go. Sometimes I'll even leave those wings out a little bit, the legs sticking out a little bit. They'll, when the water they'll move a little more for you. It's a really simple little fly to tie. I really like it there. It looks good from the bottom, looks good from the sides. You can tie it down a little more, the wings, whatever. I just come off the side. Um, the fish, fish see that quite well. It, I uh, got a little one here. I don't like it. I'm going to trim that off. I got three or so on each side. I'm good. Yeah, so there, my Brent's little caddis pupa. So you can tie that in the colors to match. Make sure you get your throat samples, and uh, that's definitely a trout staple there when you go into the caddis hatches. And uh, make sure you're pumping them fish, and you'll match match the hatch. It's very very important. If you're not, uh, you could be out of the game. They do key in on these specifically. So thanks for watching. Catch you next time. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.